It's a show with two retired detectives that were in the thick of New York crime, fast and hectic. They got some stories and some jokes, even an interview with the most popular folks. Off the cuff, off the cuff, one episode just ain't enough. Get a little laughter and an interview too. We've interviewed a lot of different people from law enforcement, from the, the crime world. And you spoke about that so cavalierly. In essence, you know, some guy needed his legs broken, you know. And it's, it's I mean, when, when you say it like that, there's some almost humor in it. But yet it's not funny. It's not funny, but it's the truth. You know, right. because you're looking to do anything you can to get these guys favor. You want them to like you. You want them to accept you and put you underneath their wing. And someday you want to become one of them. You want to be in their family. You want to become a wise guy and have a license to do anything you want. And that is what the streets are about. Plus, you need street creds. Something like that gives you street creds. No, Jim? Absolutely. Absolutely. Jimmy, yeah. someone was asking, do I have a photo of the young Jimmy Calendra? Is that you in the back? That's me, that's me with my arm around Paulie G. Okay, that's the best picture I have of a young Jimmy Calandra. Someone wanted a picture of you uh, from the back in the day. There he is. Jimmy, since you brought up Paulie G, I know that that was a close friend of yours. You, you want to talk about him? Well, Paulie G was a really good, I say a good kid. Look, in my neighborhood, there's a lot of good kids that do a lot of bad things. But we have the wrong direction because we're looking up to people that we want to become just like them. You know, you got the five families in the, in the neighborhood. And our main goal is to become a part of one of those families. And that's the truth. Okay, you want to become a part of one of those families. Now, it might sound stupid the way I'm saying it. But, you know, this is what Bensonhurst, Gravesend, if you don't have direction, if you're not taking a trade, if you're not going to school, uh, you're on the street, these are the men you're looking up to, especially if you have an Italian last name. So this is what you want to become. You want to become a wise guy, and someday you have your own crew, and you could basically do anything you want. You know? But that's, you know, that's how it is. Easy now, to get a reservation in a restaurant when you're <laughs> uh, a made guy, right? Look, hey, there's some nice... Uh, Herps to it, but uh, at the end of the day, it's either a prison sentence, death, or you're telling all your secrets to the government. That's just the way it is. I'll tell you, a wise guy once told me as I was coming up, and his name was Georgie Conti, okay? And he said, don't do like I did, you know, in this life. He said, don't volunteer so much as far as helping people. Because what you're going to do is you're going to find yourself into a lot of trouble, you know? So meaning, you know, don't volunteer to kill this guy or that guy. Just mind your business and do your own thing. You know why? You'll be more underneath the radar that way. That's true on the police department too. If, you, <laughs> if, you, if you're too good or too bad, you know, you, like you said, fly under the radar. Don't be too good or be too bad. <laughs> if you're a do-nothing on the police department, the bosses go after you. And if you're a superstar, the prosecutors go after you. And, and the time. job goes after you for, for making too much overtime. Yeah, right? yeah. What do you say about that, Tommy? About what? About <laughs> He's on oh. tape delay today. You got to be here. You got to get out of being sleeping on this show. <laughs> what I was saying was, is if you're a superstar, you somebody's breaking your balls, whether it be the job, prosecutors, whatever. And if you're a do nothing on the police force, we're talking about the bosses are breaking your balls. What do you think, Tom? A hundred percent. I mean, uh, if you're somebody that uh, is skating, you know, most people pick up on it pretty quick. And if you're somebody that's working, 
you know, there's bosses that don't like that either. You know, I mean, jealousy you factor know, comes in, right, Tom? Yeah, hundred percent. It's not too much different than the things Jimmy's talking about. You know, if you if you're doing too good at what you spoke, you know, of what you're doing growing up in the street, there may be guys that are jealous of you because other people are taking notice. Jimmy, I got to ask you specifically, because I grew up in that neighborhood too. I grew up on Avenue U, uh, right by the Mother Cabrini Club. I was around a lot of wise guys growing up. I, My mother and father were divorced when I was like 11 as well, but I had an older brother. I had cousins in the neighborhood. I had an uncle that owned a junkyard in Coney Island. So I had people around me that kind of either pulled me away from things or pointed me in the right direction. And I always hung out with guys that were a little older than me. So my point is this. Now, when I was growing up, uh, during the seventies, Eddie Lino, Bobby Lino, uh, uh, Frankie Lino, all of those guys from Avenue, U, uh, would be on the Avenue driving new cars, uh, wearing fancy clothes. Jimmy, thank you for the kind words after my mom passed away. Reading that comment made my day, made me smile. I guess, you know, Ryan Brown, Jimmy. I, I know the feeling Ryan, unfortunately, I know the feeling just hang in there and stay strong. Good advice, Jimmy. You know, something it's, you know, the humanity of, you know, we see cops and of course we did the show with, uh, with Sammy and, you know, some people didn't like that. We did that on the law enforcement side and, uh, you know, something that's their business. And I always say, you know, change the channel. You got that remote control. Billy, tell them the story about what he put on, uh, what was it? Instagram. Yeah. Tell them uh, that Sammy the bull responded to him on Instagram. Cause I put it on it, uh, the hunt for Brian uh, Laundry begins. He's a want now wanted man. And Sammy the Bull writes, you should get the mafia involved. We'll catch that dog. <laughs> that's that's on the Gabby Petito case. So yeah. uh, that's where he's coming from. That's his mindset. Yeah. Well, you know what? Sammy's an old school guy. And back in his day, uh, he, he's right. You know what? Things like that would have been taken care of, you know, in your own community. You know, so... Uh, you know, listen, it's a double-edged sword, you know, like I said, in the mob, you have good guys and you have creeps. You know, Tommy, people are jealous of me now because of this podcast. 100%. (laughs) I see, yeah, I I see his subs are going up. We're almost, we, if we don't hit 20,000 after the show, I'm coming looking for you. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) All kidding aside, all kidding. Go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. I was ahead of you guys. Now you guys are ahead of me. You, you were. That's what I said to uh, yeah. Phil. I said, holy shit, he was killing us. Now we... I tell you, you guys are doing a hell of a job, and your podcast is awesome. Thank, Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you very much. That's a nice compliment coming from you that's doing the same thing. What do you think of the current day uh, mafia? The current day mafia is basically, it's more like a gang. You know, everyone wants to beat the next guy as far as, you know, everyone wants to be better than the next person. I could say, for example, uh, who took a pinch in this case? Uh, Teddy Persico, for example. He just came home maybe a year ago. This guy is on the life payment plan. He'll be (laughs) in and out of jail for the rest of his life. He'll go in for 10 years. He'll come out for a year or two. Then he'll go back in for another five, 10 years and he'll come back out. I mean, that's the way he's going to spend his life. And, uh, you know, it's just the way it is. And then the CO's, the CO's kids are working the same cell block. (laughs) She would be somebody like him would realize like, you know, after all these years, the, you know, I'm just, there's a, you got to find another way to support yourself. He just wasn't, not a good criminal. He's out. He's he, and then he goes back in for fifteen years, eight years, ten years, nineteen years. Like he's the guy spent his whole life in prison. It's like co- coming out is like just a, a furlough, and it's time to go back. Was that the turning point for you, Jim? When they killed Paulie, was that your turning point where you well, decided to cooperate, or was it multiple things? I would say it was a couple of things. Uh, I would say Paulie G was one of them. I would say there was uh, an innocent woman who was killed. That was another one. That was another one. And, uh, you know, I just finished doing six years in prison. 11 months later, I got reindicted. Guys are rolling on me. So it was a couple of things that came together and said, you know what? Thank God I have a good family because if it wasn't for my family, in all honesty, I'd probably be doing a 50-year bid on a plea deal. 
Am I and Jim Walsh, a very good fan. Uh, I do. And thank you, Tom. And my family said, Jimmy, enough of this life. You kept your mouth shut for six years. You didn't say a word to no nobody. You never told on anybody. Now people are telling on you, forget about this life. You know what? Do what you have to do. And I sat down with Jim Walden. Tommy Days was in the room. And Jim Walden said, Jimmy, just look at the big picture. At least you're not going to spend the rest of your life in prison. Jimmy, Absolutely. when you think back on your life, and obviously now you, you, you've straightened out your life. You never got straightened out, but now you've straightened out your life, and you're on the up and up. Do you believe that was not so long ago? i tell you, it seems like it was yesterday. You know, and uh, I look back, I have a lot of regrets in my life. You know, unfortunately, I lost a lot of friends. My friend John Polio was murdered. My friend Georgie Adamo was murdered. Chestnut was murdered. Paulie Galino was murdered. Michael Morola was murdered. Those are guys that were just murdered. Those aren't guys that overdosed in the neighborhood. Now, the neighborhoods, if you're still in the neighborhood, you're probably still doing the same thing. You're going to a bar. You're probably selling a couple packages to put money in your pocket. I mean, that's just the way the neighborhood is. It never changes, you know, unless you get out of the neighborhood. You have to get out of the neighborhood to change your life. If you don't get out of the neighborhood, you're going to do the same old thing since you've been doing it since you were a kid. Nothing changes. One episode, just ain't enough.